Whether you're using a winch on your Jeep, truck, ATV, or side-by-side, -side, the techniques are all pretty much the same. But what I'm going to do now is take a few minutes and give you some tips on how to get the most out of your winch. The first thing you're going to want to do when you get your brand new warm winch is read your instruction manual. I know this is difficult for us guys, but believe me, there's a lot of good information in there that's really beneficial when it comes to using your winch. Next thing you're going to want to do is stretch out your rope or your cable because when it comes from the factory, it's not stretched and if you don't do this first, you could cause some serious damage to your cable. There's going to be a lot of different scenarios where you use your winch. Of course, the one that we're all familiar with is using it in a big old mud hole. And then another thing you can do is if you're on a really steep uphill or downhill incline and you want to use your winch line as a safety feature, one thing you don't want to do though is use it as a toe strap because that creates a lot of shock on the internal parts of your winch and is also really hard on your drum and can cause damage. Something else I always carry out on the trail is a worn accessory kit. And this is sold separately from your winch, but the nice thing about the accessory kit is it comes with some tree trunk protectors, a shackle, a snatch block, and some heavy duty worn winching gloves. And something else I throw into my accessory kit, which is sold separately, is the worn 50 foot extension rope. Now this is nice because it always seems to me like the trees that I need to get to are just a little bit farther away, and this 50 foot will definitely help get you there. Before you really get into any winching situation, you want to assess everything and make sure that it's going to go down the way you plan for it to go down. You just don't want to wing it because there's a lot of things that could go wrong. First of all, we came up here to make sure it was a straight line pool. And another thing, we wanted to make sure it was a good, healthy, live tree because a lot of people have gotten hurt by pulling dead trees over on themselves. Now that I have my tree picked out and it's a straight line pool, I'm going to free spool my winch line out there. I'm going to hook up to the tree and I'm going to come back to the stampede. I'm going to start it up and we're going to get to winching. Well, as you can see, we only came about uh, three quarters of the way with our cable on our side by side. So it's a good thing I have my synthetic extension rope along because we're going to need it to get to that anchor tree. What we're going to do first is we're going to put our tree trunk protector on here and we want to put it nice and low. You, you have your best foundation and base at, at the roots of the tree, not up high. You want to make sure that you don't have it up here because that's more stress and strain on the tree. And if it is a weaker tree, it'll bend over. So get it down nice and low to the base and it's a stronger foundation. And then we'll take our shackle, run it through here. Just like that. And this is our synthetic rope extension. You'll put that in there, and then you'll fasten your shackle with a synthetic rope extension. And the nice thing about the worn extension rope is it has a metal ring around, so you don't wear and tear the rope. This is there to reinforce the rope and give you more strength on your extension rope. If we brought our ATV up here and we had the cable with the hook, and we actually took it and ran it around the tree and hooked it into itself, and then when we winch, it's gonna draw tight on that tree and it'll kill that tree. And it'll also damage your cable. So the benefits of having a tree trunk protector is it doesn't damage the tree and it doesn't damage the cable on your winch. Well, we have plenty of extension rope, so what we'll do is hook it up to our hook here and we'll go down and take up the slack with the winch on our side-by-side. -side. A typical side-by-side -side weighs around 1,600 pounds and this has a 4,500 pound winch on it. And the thing you gotta remember is if you get really swamped in the mud, you're gonna need a 4,500 pound winch to get you out. It's not just a matter of pulling it up over a hill like this. You won't use as much power to pull your side by side up over an incline like this, but if you're sunk and you're down to the bottom of your machine and it is really hard to get out, you're gonna need 4,500 pounds to get you out. And if you don't have enough there, you may have to use your snatch block and use a double line pull and go back to the machine to double your power on your winch. That'll turn your 4,500 pound winch into a 9,000 pound winch by just doubling back to your machine. Now that we're all hooked up, you want to make sure your machine's running. And what I'm going to do is just take up this slack right here. So I got one, two, three, four, five wraps on the drum. And I'm going to start taking it in. Make sure you're wearing gloves when you're handling the cable. And what I'll do is stack that perfect. See how the cable is stacked perfect on the drum? That's what you want. You don't want it over top of each other and all birds nested up. Now that we have our cable run and it's nice and tight, I put the worn accessory bag on here. This is just a safety precaution in case the cable should happen to break. And you could really use anything for this. You could use a coat or anything that has a little bit of weight to it. 
Now the next thing we're going to do is make sure we start our side by side. You want to make sure you have it started because it drains a lot of power from your battery and the last thing you want to do is get out of the situation you're in and then be stuck there anyhow because you got a dead battery. The nice thing about having a remote is if you're in a sketchy situation you don't want to be in your side by side or on your ATV while you're winching out you can just use your remote. A good rule of thumb is to winch for about a minute, give it a break for a minute, winch for a minute, give it a break for a minute. And what that does is your winch draws a lot of heat as you're doing this. So it lets the heat dissipate and then it also helps to recharge your battery. Now that I showed you how to use the remote outside the side by side, I'm going to jump inside because there's a couple benefits. You can help steer the machine and give it a little bit of gas to get the job done. On a steep incline situation, if you just give your machine just a little bit of gas, not enough to go ahead of the winch, but just enough to assist it, that really helps in keeping your winch cool. I'll just actually take my dampener up to the hook, and then I'll just finish winching the rest of the way up to there, and then we should be able to unhook the synthetic extension rope, and we're good to go. This is what I was talking about earlier when I said you don't want to stack it up to one side or the other and this is where it's really good to have a spotter to kind of tell you if your winch cable is stacking up on one side or the other. Even though this tree is dead straight ahead of us, we still stacked a little bit to the right and if you keep stacking like this, you're going to damage your winch. Anytime you have your cable stack up to one side or the other like this after you're done winching, you're going to have to free spool it all out and then rewind it and stack it all up nice and even so that way the next time you go to use your winch, you'll be good to go. Not every winching situation is a straight line pool with a solid anchor point. That's why it's really important to know your winching guide inside and out so that way when you do come up against a situation like this, you'll be ready. Closed captioning provided by Rick's Motorsport Electrics.